on Life and Times. Northern Dancer. It was the little horse with the big heart. Athlete of the Year. We all won the Kentucky Derby that day. He's all blood and he's all gut. He became a Canadian hero. Sire of the Century. He was king of the whole place. <laughs> McDonald. One of the greatest Canadian athletes of all time was a horse. Northern Dancer was the first Canadian thoroughbred to win the Kentucky Derby, and his descendants dominate racing to this day. But the sire of the century didn't start out that way. He was too small, and his stride was far from the graceful arc of a champion. But what he lacked in stature, he made up for in attitude. Beyond the money and the glamour that have gone along with the sport of kings, there was love between a horse and the humans who believed in him. This is the touching and triumphant story of the little horse that could and did. That star bright shine in his eye that fleet foot. Now Northern Dancer lies in an oaken casket, buried near other great horses in this cemetery at Winfield's farm. It is a land where dreams of greatness are possessed of the sure knowledge that even greatness must pass. We were glad he came back to Oshawa where he was born. The people on the farm came out which was a lovely thing to do. And they all gathered round. And it's midnight, and you've got a giant pit in the ground. And it's just very sad. The thing is, is he hasn't died. He, he, he lives. His spirit still lives. His offspring still live. He's running in, in them. Northern Dancer was the greatest sire of the 20th century. His descendants dominate racing round the globe. In 1964, he won the Kentucky Derby and broke a track record, the first Canadian bred horse to win the Run for the Roses. Northern Dancer was the smallest of them all, little bigger than a pony. They say the north wind was tangled in his mane. He would become a legend. I think Northern Dancer is a great Canadian and should be on the list of great Canadians. He was the first horse voted into the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame. He was put into the Hall of Fame with all of these great athletes of all time in Canada. Uh, but that just shows you the reverence people had for him. He, and he was looked upon as one of the great Canadian athletes of all time. The man behind the horse? 1919, Edward Plunkett Taylor, a McGill student, invented the two-sided toaster and took his profits to the track. He'd found his passion. E.P. Taylor would become one of Canada's greatest entrepreneurs and philanthropists. He loved a challenge and treated business like a blank canvas. Well, the, I think the motivating principle, though, is accomplishment, sense of accomplishing something. and. Uh, doing something instructive. E.P. created two stables, Winfields and the National Stud Farm near Oshawa, Ontario. Here, the driven businessman could feel the north wind and listen to the whisper of a horse. He genuinely loved horses. He loved to ride. He loved to, you know, be in the barn with them. He loved to be around them. Muriel Lennox, author of Northern Dancer, The Legend and His Legacy, was rider in residence for 12 years at Winfields. She had seen E.P. with his arms around his horses, and she understood his passion. At a spiritual level, I think that horses gave him a respite. He was a very restless man. I always had this feeling with Mr. Taylor that if he stopped, he would die. 
the early days in Canada, wherever there were two horses, there was racing. No longer just the sport of kings, everyone went. But there was no regulation. In the 40s, horse racing was plagued by drugs, appalling conditions, and race fixing. This wasn't E.P.'s style. Founder of the Jockey Club of Ontario, he bought up failing racetracks. He wanted to raise the stakes and the standards. And he brought state-of-the-art facilities to racing it and built Woodbine, which was the most modern racetrack in North America at the time. He opened that in 1956. E.P.'s stables were known as the Taj Mahal for horses. He wanted his beloved horses to fly against the top runners in the world. So he gave them heaven on earth. I've always found that uh, for anything you have to do, you can find somebody that can do it better than yourself. <laughs> That's the secret of success, I think. <laughs> These were the best people on the planet. By far, he spared absolutely no expense. I mean, most people don't live as well as those horses. So they were treated like Olympians, they're treated like champions, and they became champions. In the 1950s and 60s, Taylor horses dominated all Canadian racing. It was time to find new competition, higher stakes. EP looked southward. He decided he wanted to breed a horse to win the Kentucky Derby. It was as simple as that. And those uh, horsemen down in Kentucky in particular didn't think much. They weren't terribly interested in Canadian breads and Canadian racing. People used to say when, when the Canadian horses crossed the border, the maple leaves fall off their ass, <laughs> you know, meaning they weren't good enough. A Canadian thoroughbred? In many minds about a snowball's chance in hell. Champion thoroughbreds had always come from Kentucky, with its temperate climate and its sweet blue grasses. E.P. wanted to beat the Southerners at their own game. He invested in great bloodlines. He used to say to get the best, breed the best, do the best. You don't always get the best that way, but you often do. In the 50s, E.P. and his wife Winnie traveled to the top auctions in the world. It was a circuit of the glamorous and the wealthy, where pockets were deep. Horse people can recite the genealogy of a foal, chapter and verse. Northern Dancer was sired by Nearctic, a Canadian horse of the year. His dam was Natalma, daughter of a Belmont winner, native dancer. His grandsire was Niarco, 1938 champion of Europe. His great-grandsire, Hyperion, the smallest horse to win the Epsom Derby. It was all blue blood. Like this little newborn, Northern Dancer got up on his feet quickly. Northern Dancer was born in this stable on May 27, 1961. His registration papers noted that the little crown prince had a white slash on his face and three white stockings. Like this day-old colt, barely out of the womb and born to run. Winnie Taylor shared her husband's passion for horses she gave Northern Dancer his name. She's the only person I know that was truly connected to that horse. Now, I always adored Northern Dancer. He certainly had character. I loved him dearly because he was so little. Um, but nobody else seemed to love him when he was a foal um, or a yearling as I did. Hey, horse, you're all right. Well, this is a nice feeling. This is a very nice feeling. Peter Poole, then farm manager of Winfields, witnessed the birth of Northern Dancer. These, these fellas are all special. Poole saw the unique the, spirit that the, charmed uh, Winnie Taylor. Uh, the, uh, I think Mrs. Taylor, in, in essence, had always spoiled him a little bit with, with giving him treats and things like that, and he knew her, and she's soft, and, and he, he treated her the same way. He just, all the toughness went out, and he was just a big pussycat. 
young racehorses reveal their natures from the beginning. Northern Dancer was not like the others. Oh, he had personality just coming out his ears. <laughs> this liveliness and rambunctiousness and naughtiness in many ways was, his, was strong characteristics. Hard to handle, like a rambunctious child. Northern Dancer had a personality of a boxer. He was pugnacious, he was feisty, and he liked to do things his way. He didn't like to be, I guess, um, he wanted to do things his way, and if somebody wanted to do something he didn't want to do, then he let you know. 